It's hard to find a driving game where the strength of the game is not driving, yet somehow the game is still fun. That describes the Tokyo Extreme Racer series, because the driving sucks, but the game is strangely addictive and just an absolute guilty pleasure of mine. The cars handle like bars of soap with lead blocks attached to them. The environments are dull and amazingly repetitive, yet something about the Tokyo Extreme Racer series keeps bringing me back for more. Maybe it's the $2 price tag and practically unlimited gameplay, or maybe it's end bosses like Provocative Secretary. The whole point of the game is to race against other driving gangs who all have ridiculous names. In fact, that's really one of the highlights of Tokyo Extreme Racer. Bad guys with names like Rolling Guy. Here's a replay of my race against the end boss from the Tokyo series who had a much faster car than I did. And that's one of the things with this game. You start out with a very slow car and it takes hours and hours and hours until you can modify the thing to the point where it's competitive. So you have to drive like this for a while. You are not getting past me. His car is way faster than mine, so this is the only way that I can win. It's driving like this that makes Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 worth playing. At least once you should give this series a try. I'll admit I probably would not enjoy this game as much had I not first played it on the Sega Dreamcast back in 1999. In fact, it was one of the earlier classic game room reviews, Tokyo Extreme Racer on the Sega Dreamcast. We reviewed the second one as well. This is Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 on the PlayStation 2. And previously, the cars were obvious knockoff imitations of real brands, like the Acura NSX was called something else, like the X12 492.3. In this game, they have actual licensed vehicles, which loses some of the charm from the cheap knockoffs. There's Subarus, I'm driving an Impreza for most of the game, Nissan, Toyota and many others. What you do in the game is you drive around on a massive series of highways throughout Tokyo and a couple other cities in Japan for this game. Something like 200 miles worth of highway, but it all kind of looks the same. It's not because there's some sections which are wide open, others have bridges and things to dodge, more curves. You're driving around these highways in the middle of the night and you come up upon other gangs, flash your lights, and start the race. When you win races, you earn money, you buy upgrade parts, and you can buy new cars. There's not much sense in upgrading your brakes since you can bounce off the walls, however you lose some of your power bar on the top. But not enough to worry about, I find that in the Tokyo Extreme Racer games acceleration is everything. Because all the cars handle like crap no matter what you do, you just want a fast one. It may look like I'm crushing the competition, but I'm about 10 or 12 hours into the game. When you begin playing, you start with a slow car and it takes a long time to earn money. The earlier games in the series were the same way. It takes a long time to get into Tokyo Extreme Racer. And up to this point, I've probably lost half my races, but now that I've defeated a few end bosses by driving like a complete jackass, I can afford the fourth stage turbocharger.
It's not a terribly stressful or taxing game. It's not the kind of video game that punishes you and really tests your reflexes. I find that Tokyo Extreme Racer is actually very calm and relaxing, which is why I've been able to play it for so long. It's a nice game to zone out to. You just drive around and defeat these opponents with silly names and continuously modify your car until you finally get enough money to buy the NSX or something. It's an addictive game, Tokyo Extreme Racer 3. From what I understand, this game is actually impossible to finish. I guess there was some glitch in the North American version where you can't even defeat the final end boss. Now for two or three dollars, who cares? There's several games in the whole Tokyo Extreme series, a couple on the PlayStation 2, and the earlier ones on the Dreamcast. I'd say if you like games like Burnout and Midnight Club, you may want to give the Tokyo Extreme series a chance, just check it out. The driving is nowhere near as good, it's, I mean, it's an arcade-style driving game, but Burnout and Midnight Club are really good ones. Tokyo Extreme Racer is almost like a strategy game with a bit of driving in it. The longer that you play the game, the more cars that you unlock and the more series of highways that you unlock. There's something like 200 miles of road in Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, but it will take you a week of gameplay to open them all up. I hope they make more of them, just uh, make, make it so you can actually win the game next time. Tokyo Extreme Racer 3.